How do YouTube SX here with a video for you. If you can't already guess by the what's on the screen, we're going to talk about GUID partition tables. Yes, the good old GPT disk layout. Now, there's still a lot of confusion I find out on the interwebs on how and what is GPT. How being how to use it properly, how to speak about it. I think part of the confusion comes from the fact that GPT is quite different from MBR, the old partitioning layout. And a lot of the tools or some of the tools used to do partitioning use terminology that was really applicable to MBR partition layouts even though we're dealing with GPT disks. Namely the whole flag business. Partitioning tools like Parted and Gparted and KPM Core use the term flags to describe partition types. Well that's what uh, <laughs> that's what they do. In GPT, there are no flags. If you look at the UEFI specification, which defines GPT disk layout, there's no talk of flags. There are partition type GUIDs, which are strings of code of value. I think it's a 32 character length hexadecimal value and that length of hex code yields billions and billions of possible unique UUIDs or GUIDs. The GUID partition type are a set of, or not a set, a very few, a handful of GUIDs that are agreed upon to mean certain things. The EFI system partition or ESP gets its own specific GUID as a type, partition type GUID. That is what defines or identifies a partition as an EFI system partition and as bootable. The EFI firmware or UEFI firmware will look for a specific partition type GUID on a disk and know that that is where the EFI boot stub loader is. That's quite different from how an MBR disk and a legacy BIOS will identify and know how to work with the bootable partition on an MBR disk. However, Gparted uses the term flags, whereas that was appropriate on an MBR disk when the data structures were very simple compared to GPT and much smaller. And the boots, bootable status of a partition was an actual single bit that was either up or down, one or zero, indicating it's bootable or not. And that bit in an MBR setting was only able to be applied to one partition at a time. Now, GPT, I guess you could have more than one EFI partition. However, you really shouldn't. But that's another debate. We're going to look at actual GPT partitioning in in a moment here. But if you need or want to look at the actual specification, you can just Google UEFI specification and it's the first or second link that comes up. You can read quite a bit about it right here in the manual, the specifications. The most important bits that we're going to deal with get, there we go are on page 122 
Now, what I mean by that is, well, it begins up here, really, page one, 121. The partition type GUID, this is what we're talking about. This is also the unique partition GUID that every partition gets assigned. And the unique partition GUID is what will appear in your FS tab. The partition type GUID is what is used by the bootloader to know which partition is bootable. Now, an EFI system partition will should always have this GUID for the partition type. This is not a flag. It's a long string of code indicating the partition's use in the system. GPT does define some attributes, which I guess could be argued are similar to flags, but they're not really flags and they're not called flags in GPT specification lingo. Let's head on over to the actual use of partitioning. I have handily enough have started a VM and we have some blank disks to work with. Now we're going to use Gparted because it's visual and this is a video and then we'll do some work in the command line as well. Let's first start off by dealing with this hard drive that has not been uh, has not had a partition layout applied, has no partitions. So the first thing we're going to do is create a partition table. And we'll set it to GPT. Now we can actually start to partition this drive. So let's go ahead and do that. Let us first put on our EFI system partition. Now I always choose 512 or a little more. The file system type needs to be FAT32. And we can give it a name. We should give it a name. EFI. Now FAT32 is a file system that's been around for decades. Invented, uh, developed by Microsoft for a replacement or extension of the FAT16 file system, which was getting a, a bit un incapable of handling the larger disks coming out around the end of the 1990s. So let's go ahead and apply or add. And let's go ahead and just add one more partition just for kicks and giggles here. We'll do a 10 gig partition Linux 10 gigs. There we go. So let's hit apply. Let it do its thing. Now we haven't dealt in Gparted yet with the flags or the bootable or EFI status. We've just created the partitions. Let's take a look at that disk now in another tool before we go on. Now I'm going to use CG disk. One, because it's a little more graphical than G-Disk, and it gives us very much the same information. So here we have CG-Disk opened on SDA. We can see the partitions we created. First one being this 512 megabyte Microsoft Basic Data Partition. If we head over to Info, we can see that there is a partition GUID code. Now this is the exact code that's defined as a Microsoft Basic Data GUID. There's also the partition unique GUID code. This is a randomly generated GUID for this partition. Now this GUID is what will appear in your FS tab. This GUID 
is what the bootloader uses to see if this is a bootable partition or not. And it's not. Let's continue and let's quit because we're going to want this to reload when we change the flag, so to speak, in Gparted. If we go to Manage Flags, you see there is a boot flag. Gparted also has an ESP flag. However, that has been deprecated in KPM Core, which is the backend partitioning component used by the Calamari's installer. If you use the Calamari's, you're more used to KPM Core, so you no longer see this ESP flag. When you set the boot flag, though, it does automatically set the ESP flag. Now that's just because that's the way Gparted works. We hit OK, and now we can see the flags were set to boot an ESP. If we reload our disk in CG disk, we can see it's now an EFI system partition. If we go to Info, we can see that the partition GUID code has changed. It is now an EFC, EFI, sorry, system partition GUID code. The partition unique GUID stays the same. That was assigned when the partition was created and that won't change. Now if you reformat the partition, I believe it will change, but I'm not positive. Okay. Hopefully that bit is clear. Now let's get out of this. Let's go to a different tool. Let's go to GDisk. Now GDisk works a lot like FDisk, but specifically to with GPT partition disks. We can see there's a protective MBR, there's a GPT present, and if you want to know what how to use GDisk, you really need to go to the help. Now the first line help is sort of like the first line in tech support. It gives you the most basic features. You can back up your GPT data to a file, change partitions name, delete, add partitions. You can show detailed information on a partition. So let's do I for information, one for the EFI system partition, and we get the same info we got in CG disk. So if we go back to help here, uh, we can print the partition table. Let's see, we can verify a disk. We can also go to X, which is extra functionality for experts only. And if you notice now, it says expert command. So let's go to help. And we have a whole bunch of different commands, or quite a few different commands under expert help. GDisk is a very, very good utility to get familiar with if you're working with GPT disks. CG disk hides a bit of the complexity, maybe makes it easier like CF disk does for F disk. However, GDisk is really good when it comes to getting very fine grained control over your GPT disk. Okay, you can also zap, Z, zap, destroy all data structures on your disk. Could be very handy at times if you want to reuse a disk and nothing seems to be working. G-disk zap will remove any partition data whatsoever. Okay.
if we want to get back to the main menu from the export menu M will get us back and now we're back to the main menu so hopefully all this helps in understanding a little better about the differences between MBR GPT MBR partitioning tools applying MBR terms to GPT data structures and actual GPT specific tools like GDisk or CGDisk and their usefulness when it comes to really dealing with GPT data structures and getting to know the ins and outs of the GPT disk layout. Hopefully this helped. If you have any questions, I'll put all the appropriate links in the description to the UEFI manual here. I'll also put in, and this is a fun little thing to look at now. It's always been fun for me. I used to rely on this for years in the 90s when I started off with alternative operating systems like OS2 and BOS. The old list of partition identifiers used in MBR partition layouts. This is how you, this is the old way of indicating partition types. And reading through, if you're an operating history, operating system history buff, this is a great read. You can get a lot of good information out of just reading about the partition types and the operating systems used for different partitions. Now, I know this is an aside to most of my video, but if you're a real partitioning nerd, you probably already know this, but I'll put the link to this in the video as well. Great read for the nerds. At that point, I will leave you. Hopefully, I've imparted a little bit of knowledge. Hopefully, you can take away something useful. And when you're dealing with your partitioning, you may even get a little more confident in knowing what you're doing. Take care. Hope your New Year's was fun and healthy. And you will see me in another video. Bye-bye for now, folks.